Hello again. We're now getting some work done on the engine. If you watched the last video, you'll know that I had problems on the rally um, and we've got a 15 valve Cosworth YB engine. So we, these were all a bit loose, took the strut brace off as well, just so we could pull the cam cover off. Let's have a look and see what's going on. When I say we, I mean Jonesy. So the idea is now I've got to take the exhaust manifold off and the inlet manifold off the rocket cover and then start taking it apart. I'll have to drain the water out, um, take the pipes off. Basically, you just get the head off. Um, yeah, I haven't taken the head off for a while now. Jonesy reckons it's a easy job. So, to, let me get stuck in. Well, I've, I've um, got all the bolts at the exhaust manifold, but it's, it won't come far, far enough over to remove it from the head. So I think what I'll do is I'll take the throttle bodies off and then do the engine mount so I can move the whole engine over slightly and that should give it enough room to pop that off. I'm gonna have to drain the water out, so I need to find a bucket or something. All right, I've got the air filter off. I've taken the radiator out and I've spilled a lot of water. I need to get the inlet manifold off, because that's enough to come off anyway. And then hopefully I can rock the engine over a bit and get the um, exhaust manifold off, because we haven't quite got enough room to get it off. Then I can put it in top dead centre, make sure I mark everything, line everything up, so it goes back exactly the same place that it came off. Right, let's try and get these off. I've taken the inlet manifold off and these three ports are nice and clean, and that's exhaust there. So I'm guessing it's an inlet valve um, that's bent. Um, I need to remove that engine mount, so I'll get onto that now. Well, I've just unloosened the um, engine mount, and I don't think it's meant to do that. There's a lot of play in that. I think we have to take that off and get them replaced. So that's quite handy to find. Right, I'm ready to get the cam belt off now. So I've got to try and get top dead centre, but I think I read something on the internet about lining up the um, bottom pulley with a there was a, uh, something on the timing belt cover, but obviously that's not going to work here. I see there's a little something sticking out on the bottom pulley. I think what I'll do is take number one plug out, get it so the piston's top dead centre, see if these yellow marks line up. If not, I'll rotate it and um, put it at top dead centre again and see what happens. Right, that's the bottom pulley marked. Um, there's nowhere else for me to mark it. So I, I can always double check that the line's marking up with it. And what I've done, I've marked the inlet and the exhaust cam on it. And those dots line up. But it's a bit hard to sort of notice where they're lining up because they can be a bit, a bit out. Right, let's get the belt off. All right, we've got the cam cover off. So all of these buckets are nice and tight. When it gets this one. Which has got probably more than 10 mil play in it. So yeah, I've got a fingers gap in there. That's uh, obviously not good, not as it should be. This is what Andy did at the rally. So he took the cam cover off, just to, he said he thought that someone was wrong with it. I thought it was an exhaust leak. <laughs> it just goes to show how much he knows and how little I do. All right, so, it's all marks. Let's get it, let's get the belt off and then pull the head off. All right, that's all the bolts out. The head is now free. So it's time to pull it off. I'm quite excited to see what's, what they probably won't look like anything in the valve. I've had bent valves before and very hard to see that they're bent, but 
yeah, interesting to see. All right, let's see one where there was slack on the um, the bucket. Sorry, it just looks like, oh, I was going to say, it looks like the piston's lower down on that one than it is on that one. It's just the head gasket's gone, gone up. I was worried then. Oh, that's a bent rod. All right, I'll put the head on the side because we don't want to bend the valves. Oh, look, <laughs> that's well open. That's, and that's with the cam and the bucket and the springs all on it still. But yeah, that's not ideal. All right, yeah, I think we found a problem then. A 15 valve Cosworth engine. Right, so that's now going off to the UK. What I'll have to do is make a frame so I can put it in a solid box with handles on. So the postman's not gonna chuck it about everywhere. But I've got to expect the worst because postman are postman. So I'm gonna make sure it's very secure in the box. It's not going to be rattling about, it'll be fixed in solid because it's got to come back as well. Um, Andy said he'll give it the once over, so I'm guessing the valve's going to be a bit, bit bent. Yeah, that's not even. It's just got... Sure, the spring should be stopping that from doing that. I don't know. I've never got sort of this deep into. I mean, I've, I've built engines, I've rebuilt engines, but I've just taken off bits and put new bits on. It's not the same as working out what's what's going where. But the um, head gasket doesn't look anything special. Victorines. I thought it'd be a multi-layer steel thing, but no. So what I'll do is I'll. Um, I'll get in touch with Andy, see what he suggests and what recommends. Um, we'll probably have to measure the, ga the gasket and see what it was, because we want to keep it exactly the same. So that way it doesn't need dyno time or anything. Yeah, those pistons are the same height. That was a little bit worrying then. Let's, I hope that's all right. Right, um, I think we'll wrap it up there. And the next engine one will be putting it back together I'm guessing so fingers crossed